Oh, hello there. I hope my voice isn't too annoying or boring. I'm just going to review and explain the code behind my 3D maze game. As a quick disclaimer though, I'm not a very good programmer and I doubt any of this is up to any industry standard, so take everything I say in this video with a grain of salt. Alright, so this is my main.cpp file. It's seven lines long and not very interesting. When I organized my code, I just wanted my, a fairly clean and simple main file, so there's really not much to say here. Alright, so this is my engine.h file. Um, I'm using glfw as the window management, and I'm using glm as the mathematics library. Um, and it's not shown here, but I'm using glad as the OpenGL extension. Uh, and then from the standard library, I'm using chrono, vector, and stack. Alright, so this is the engine. We have the gl window, which is just the window that I'm going to be rendering to. Uh, we have the vertex buffer. The only vertex buffer that I have in this game is a cube, so uh, and I just stretch it out or di or color it different. So there's not much to say about this. Uh, this is the normal shader, and this is the rainbow shader that codes for the rainbow cube that you have to find at the end of the maze. This is a perspective matrix, and uh, it's been a while since I've looked at this code, but if I recall correctly, that is the thing we're going to multiply by the vector of the position in an attempt to get a 3D effect. This is the vector that stores the camera location of the player. This is the vector that essentially stores the movement and, well, moves the player around. This stores the camera's current rotation and the rotation speed of the camera. And then this is the time, stores the time to draw the frame. So basically this is like to, as a way to calculate the delta time so that the camera, so basically when I draw the stuff, it is drawn all at the same speed for no matter how good your system is. And then this is my level data. This stores the vector of the each uh, wall in the maze. And then this stores all the, I call them coins, but they're just some yellow spinning cubes. Um, this is, stores where the exit position is, essentially the rainbow cube at the end of the maze. And here's some constants, so basically I just, uh, this is like the wall size, it's like three. This is the map, the size of the map, so it's 32 by 32 in size. Um, we have the player speed, which is like how fast the player moves, and then we have the rotation speed, which basically stores how fast the uh, player rotates, but not to be confused with rotation speed, this is like the camera's current rotation speed, this is what I set it to when the player starts m pushing on the keys and moving it around. Theta, I believe, is just what I store as the r rotation of a spinning cube, that's what I use for the spinning effect. This draws and updates the scene, so essentially the, this uh, moves the player around and makes sure that the player doesn't collide in the walls. And this is just what draws, what the camera sees. And then we have the key input. This is, I'm using the glfw key input, which I'm not sure is the ideal library for this, but it works all right. Um, then we have the level file, which I don't actually use. When I originally made this, I was intending for there to actually be a pre-built map, but in the end I decided that that was too much effort instead just came up with a, a maze generation algorithm that just randomly generated the maze, which is you can see down here. And then we have the loop that basically runs the, the program, and then we have the constructor. So that's pretty much it for the engine.h file. Alright, so this is the engine.cpp file. So in my engine.h file, I just had the function prototypes declared. So this is the run function. Um, uh, it's just the main rendering loop and what updates the frame, as you can see down here. And I also calculate the delta time to make sure that the uh, green gets drawn at the same rate for every single system, no matter how good or bad it is. Um, this is, uh, yeah, you can see it down here. And then this is um, at the end of the program, when you close out the window, it releases all the resources used by GLFW. And up here, it's just what I, it's just telling OpenGL what, and how to calculate the Z buffer, I believe. And down here, this is the engine constructor. So I set up the uh, seed, which is the current time since the cur since I believe the Unix epoch or whatever, 
Um, and then we try to initialize glfw. If that fails, we close out the window. And then we then create the window. If that fails, we leave the program. But if that does succeed, we make it into the current context. And then we load glad. And if that fails, we also close out the program. And then we set up the, perspe the perspective matrix. So we get the field of vision, the screen dimensions, the aspect, and then we use that to calculate the aspect ratio. And then we calculate the perspective matrix, as you can see. And of course, we have to convert that to radians. The f of v up here, we have it in degrees. And then we have the aspect ratio, and then just the near and far. And then we have the set the input mode. Uh, this is, well, we, well, basically from what I read, it appears that I just made the cursor invisible. And then this is our cube vertex buffer. As you can see, it's uh, just a large chunk of numbers which represent the vertices of a cube. And then we set up the vertex buffer. And then we also set up the shader for the basic shader and then the rainbow ver rainbow shader. And then we have the camera, which sets the position of the camera, and then the we kill the camera's movement. I believe I actually had a bug where I, I did not initialize these, and the player just randomly these would pop into a place, and then their rotation was kind of funny, and then they might start moving random positions. And I it confused me for a while until I realized that I did not initialize these. And then we just set up the key input function. Uh, nothing particularly interesting. And then we generate the maze. So, yeah, this file is not very interesting, but I wanted to cover it. So, yeah. Alright, so this is my draw file. This is where I just draw everything onto the screen. So we have the background color to be a nice baby blue color. Or not nice if you hate that kind of color. Um, we then have the, we clear the screen and then we also clear the Z buffer and then we set it to the basic shader. And then we have all these matrices that I calculated, which I believe essentially are multiplied by the vector to get a 3D effect, which I don't think was a very good explanation. And, but I don't really feel like I have time for that, nor do I have the knowledge to understand it. I mean, I've read a book, but uh, I'm not sure if I fully understand, so if you have any corrections, please let me know in the comments. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated, and I would also like to expand my knowledge. Um, we then just send it to the shader as information, and then we hopefully, and then it will just get multiplied by the vector to, again, produce a 3D effect. And then we pass in the color, which is like this kind of greenish color, and then we have, uh, we, we then draw the ground, which is like this giant you stretched out, well, it's like this giant stretched out cube thing. Uh, it's like just a giant stretched out green cube. And then we draw the maze, which is essentially we have the rotation matrix, which will be used for the spinning yellow cubes, or as I like called them in the code, coins, and the rotated, I believe, we have the rotating rainbow cube that you find at the end of the maze. But first we draw the, the walls, which don't rotate. And then we also draw the coins and the exit cube, as I called it here. I prefer to call it the rainbow cube. And then we change, and for the rainbow cube, we change our shader to be the rainbow shader to create that nice rainbow effect. And then we uh, just swap the buffers in the window. We tell GLFW to swap the buffers, and then, well, that's about it. So, not particularly interesting. So this is where I update the scene. Um, uh, this is really nothing in the maze to update other than the player camera, so basically I move the player camera and then, oh, these are like the borders in case you somehow manage to get out of the maze and um, you need, so basically it's like this invisible wall and it, uh, I don't believe you'll ever interact with it though, assuming I have the wall collision correct, which is down here, so you see yeah, nothing interesting, just the standard rectangular collision. And then we also have the update the theta for to spin the rainbow cube and coins. And also we rotate the camera. And we also 
check if the player found the exit, essentially if they collided with the with the rainbow cube. And if they did, we'll generate a new maze and then, I guess, jump out of this function for the time being. But if they didn't, we'll check if they also collided with a coin and then they'll collect it. But there's really no score counter for coins as I couldn't be bothered to have implemented that. So it just gets deleted from the, uh, th from the list. And I'm not sure if any of this is particularly efficient code, but hopefully it just gets the job done. Um, so we then uh, have gravity affect the camera, and I made two changes since the video that I put up for the cube, for basically the maze for a couple months ago, I believe. Um, I changed it so that the walls are slightly wider, and I also changed it so the player could actually jump and, well, jumping actually serves no purpose other than, I guess, to prove that's what a 3D game, and also so that I guess you can get a peek over the walls and maybe get a hint. Uh, what the maze looks like so you know we can we have the gravity affect the wall get affect the camera i'm sorry and then we i guess this just stop if the camera position is below a certain point we just have gravity stop affecting it and put it back to its correct position so you know that's about it so yeah Alright, so this is where I handle the key input. I'm using GLFW for the key input, which, as I said earlier in the video, I'm not entirely sure if it's the best library to do it, but I don't really know much about this. Well, I don't really know any other libraries to help me out, so this is what I used. Um, it's pretty simple. You use the arrow key to move forward. Um, you move the down key to move backwards. And then the left arrow key, you rotate left and right arrow key, you rotate right, so self-explanatory, and jump, which is, as, as I said earlier, something that I added after the video that I posted about this game was originally post when I uploaded that video, uh, it's something that I added, uh, it's pretty simple, and then this is just what happens when you release the key, um, I kill the movement, I kill the rotation speed, and that's pretty much it, so... This is probably one of the least interesting parts of the program, so yeah, but I just wanted to also include it in the video. Alright, so this is what I consider the most interesting part of the program. This is the function that generates a maze. So I clear the wall list, and I also clear the coin list. And then we have like this uh, 31 by 31 maze where we store the walls. Uh, well, basically, it represents the data. So we first start by filling all these mazes, which are represented by this hashtag pound symbol, whatever you want to call it. And then we have the uh, frontier, which is essentially every point at which the ma we the path can go to. Um, this is the where the maze generator is so far. So basically, this is like the path. So you know when we carve out a path in the maze this is what this is where it's stored um we start at the point 2915 so we of course push that to the frontier and then we push that to the path um we then generate the maze down here so we continue while the path is not empty so we first uh, choose the thing at the top of the path which is the farthest we've gone to the maze and then we pop that off and then we look for a uh, well, the frontier, I mean. Uh, so we then pop that off the frontier, and then we go to the... And then we first make sure that's out of the, uh, not out of bounds, and if it is, then we just ignore it. But if it isn't, if it's within bounds, we then choose a random direction to move in. Um, we then and, uh, check every single possible direction. So we start at the direction here, and then we generate the next cell, so... So, um, say for example, if it's zero, we I believe we move up, and then if it's uh, one, we move down. If it's two, we move left, and then if it's three, it we move right. And then we make sure that's within bounds. If it isn't within bounds, or we have already visited it, essentially, um, it's our uh, we then set it. Well, if it hasn't been visited yet, we set that to be an empty spot, which is represented by the period. And then we create a passage to that cell uh, so that we can actually access it. And then we add a second, and then we add that cell to the frontier and path. And then we break out of the loop, uh, which I, we break out of this loop, not the main loop. And then we continue out. And then if it's not a valid position, 
then we just increment the direction by one and we should eventually find a valid place to move to and then and we go there and then continue the maze generation however if none of this works and we've probably we've hit a dead end so we set that place to be a coin so essentially the spinning yellow cubes that you can collect they're found at the end of dead ends so that's a thing to do and then and we try find a place to move to so you know, while the path isn't empty we pop off the path and then we attempt to find a place to move to to continue the path and then we just repeat everything we did above uh, and then we move and then yeah so it's just the same code and then at and then we keep going this we keep generating the path we hit a dead end we backtrack and then we find another place to move to and then we after all of this we should have a maze generated i'm not sure i think there are a few bugs where occasionally it might loop back in on itself but that's fine it it works and then we reset the we then set the position of the player which is at 2915 and then we also set where the exit is. These are always in the same position. And then we reset the player's rotation. This is just for me to print out the maze data, which I just used for debug purposes when I was trying to get this to work. It kind of broke a few times. And then we just read it in the data, and then we move, add all the walls and coins, and then we set the position of the rainbow cube. And then we also set the position of the player. And then that's pretty much it. That's the maze generation function. Alright, so this is all the OpenGL stuff that I've decided to abstract into classes, mainly just to reduce the amount of boilerplate that I had to write and I guess keep things relatively organized. So there's really nothing interesting here, it's just standard OpenGL stuff. So yeah, it's not particularly interesting. So I'll move on. All right, so these are the shaders. Um, this is like the basic shader, which essentially um, it just gets the position where, of where the point should be, of where the point should essentially be put on. It's, this is like the vertex shader. This is um, to create the 3D effect. And then we also pass on the shading to the fragment shader. We basically, if it's at a certain point, we set that to be actually slightly shaded in. So this was an attempt to not have the cube be a full solid color, um, so that way it didn't all blend together. Um, this is just the standard, uh, this is just a simple shade, uh, fragment shader. So as you can see, it's just nothing interesting. Um, the This is not anything used, this is like for or 2D stuff, I didn't change anything for that. And then um, this is the just another generic uh, fragment shader, so that's not interesting either. Um, this is the, uh, is, um, this I believe is the rainbow shader, which essentially we pass out the uh, uh, color here, um, and then it gets linearly interpolated by the uh, by the GPU to essentially create a cool rainbow effect. I saw this in this book teaching about OpenGL and I thought it was kind of interesting so I included it. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. There's really not much to say here. So yeah, that's about it for the entire program. And I'll be honest, the game actually isn't that fun to play. But it is, it was, I actually probably had more fun writing the code to make the game than actually playing the game. So, yeah. Um, IGN's probably going to give me 2 out of 10 stars, but you know what? I, I had fun. Alright, so that's about it for this video. Um, I'm going to put the source code on GitHub. I believe I've already posted it onto a repository on GitHub. Uh, you can do whatever you want with it, I don't care. Or, um, if you make it into something even better, then please let me know so I can try it out. Um, though most of my code's pretty bad and you probably won't want to use it. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna include the link in the description and probably in the pinned comment. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. Um, have a good day, 
and I guess leave a comment. See you. Oh yeah, and I guess to end up the video, um, I guess I'll just end with some gameplay of the final product. So as you can see here, we can jump. Um, it's the maze. It actually, isn't that maze? Like, come to think of it, it's just one long winding hallway. Though occasionally you do see uh, two forks in the branch like this, so that's fun. Um, yeah. Please check out my other videos. Like, uh, for some reason, mazes are like my, my most popular video. And then I did some dumb John Cena video back when the social credit meme was a thing. But yeah, I'm rambling now. Um, I guess I should stop talking now.